Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, students, and honored guests. An unusual journey began some 20 plus years ago, culminating into what you have witnessed today, a ritual, a rite of passage, if you will. But it is more than a mastering of the art, the technical spectrum. Those of us who study and practice the martial arts, we've been allowed to partake in not just a ceremony, but to validate and empower someone of special character and abilities. Today, we, all of us that are present today, we have become a part of Chang Kwan history. My task this evening is a challenging one. I must introduce you to Mr. John Weedman, one of our guests of honor. I've known John for approximately 18 years, and in the confinement of six to eight minutes, I must share with you some significant moments so that you too will know him as I do in a more personal and in-depth manner. Exactly one week ago today, John and I met. We spoke about the importance of tonight's meeting. I wondered what he was thinking. I wondered what he was feeling. And these are some of the things that I asked him. John, as you reflect back, what do you think was your most important uh, meeting, most significant incident? Knowing John, I knew he was gonna give me the answer I expected. When Mr. Wiedemann began in the martial arts, he was kind of cocky. He had some prior training. He asked Master Chung to show him some stuff that he might learn when he visited his studio. Master Chung used a simple wrist lock technique and introduced Mr. Wiedemann to the mat in a very deliberate manner. John looked up at Master Chung and explained, okay, Master Chung explained to him rather, that he would teach him how to fall, how to face failure, but how to get back up again. He needed to learn from his mistakes and how to go on. The second incident John told me was he lived with Master Chung for approximately three years. And during that time, he was treated like a son. One morning at breakfast, Master Chung looked at Mr. Weedman and said, in his very stern voice, how far do you want to go in the martial arts? Mr. Weedman looked at him, smiled, said, I want to be a master like you. Now, those of us that know Master Chung, he doesn't make very many facial expressions or gestures. He simply looked John in the eye and said, hmm, I understand. Good you set your sights so high because if you fail, you still might be successful. Mr. Wiedemann is also educated. Prior to becoming a businessman, he was a teacher. He is someone that I consider to have the highest moral value and character. He is also a writer, a philosopher, and a role model to his peers. When I think of the word master, I sometimes you know, have these little flashbacks. I hear the flute in the background, and I think of the TV show Kung Fu. And like the wise Master Poe, Mr. Wiedemann would ask questions of his students in class. And this little cue that we all learned was to prepare us for a deeper meaning and message. And I'd like to give you an example of one of his questions. And I'd like you to think about the answer. What is the universal language? Think for a moment before you answer. None of the students may reply. Pain. Pain is the answer. It is the universal language. Mr. Wiedemann pointed that out to us, and me in particular one day, and said, sir, you must learn to speak it fluently. I had to ponder and think about that, and then I understood. Mr. Wiedemann is also well-read. He has an extensive library of historical martial arts books, and they deal with philosophy and every other subject, including key power. He is a true student of the art. He is a writer with a purpose. He has a saying that he mentioned to me a while back. And whenever he read anything, he always said, it went in my mind and it came out of my heart. When he would read something, he would ponder it, reflect, and then do his own writing. I consider him a warrior philosopher, always maintaining the balance. One of his other famous sayings is pen and sword in a court. 
Over 20 years of physical teaching has been combined and commingled with a deeper meaning. He doesn't just teach us how to kick and punch. There's another message that comes with it. It is a synthesizing of what I call a practical philosophy. Mr. Wiedemann practices what he preaches. Today, people do not become involved. When a situation occurs on the street, many people turn and look the other way. Many people comment, oh, that guy must be a fool. He's crazy for getting involved. One such incident occurred right here in LA. Mr. Wiedemann, going about in his normal daily business in, in the city, came upon an elderly police officer who was faced with six gang members, three in one car and three in the other. The officer attempted to stop them, and of course there were six of them. These rough gang-looking members looked at the police officer and then looked at Mr. Wiedemann. Six of them and, and two of them. Well, little did they know. They didn't know Mr. Wiedemann or his abilities. To make my, short, my story very short, he assisted in detaining and capturing them. Mr. Wiedemann received a letter of commendation from the then chief of the city of New York the police department, Darrell Gates, for his valor in the face of danger and for assisting a police officer. This is just one of the incidents where he has, as you heard this evening, he swore to uphold the law, the constitution, to help those that are not able to defend themselves. He takes his oath and he takes his philosophy very seriously. When we look at martial artists, we also think of them as fighters. They are athletes, they compete in the ring. Mr. Wiedemann's career was actually less than two and a half years. And in that short span of time, he was a nationally rated fighter in the top 10. And depending upon which magazine you read, whether it was Black Belt or, Korea, or the uh, Taekwondo Times, he was ranked between fifth and seventh nationally. One fighting event I would like to share with you I entitled the little fish in the big pond. In 1978, Mr. Wiedemann had trained for less than two and a half years, and he was a secondary red belt. Mr. Wiedemann would go to tournaments with Master Chung. He would always fight in the black belt division. Master Chung told Mr. Wiedemann, don't worry, there's no one here of significance. There's no one here with really good experience. But all Mr. Wiedemann could see were big, burly guys, and of course, John, as if you look at him physically in stature, everyone was big and burly. He weighed only about 165 or 70 pounds. In his first match, he faced two opponents. Both were second degree black belts. He won his first fight. His second, however, was a different story. This fighter was ranked number five in the nation. He had 12 years of training. He weighed 278 pounds. He was six foot six. Well, let me just say, John was knocked out. And two minutes later, when he regained consciousness, he thought the match was still going to continue. He wanted to go back and fight the guy. Now that's what I call real fighting spirit. The letter BKF is an acronym for the Black Karate Federation. This federation was to uh, have within its membership some of the uh, probably most prominent fighters. One thing about fighters or people who compete, you can always tell how successful they are by the comments that are made by their peers or by their competitors. Mr. Wiedemann is a people person. He knows no race, no creed, no color. The number one rated fighter in this particular organization and others, okay, mentioned that Mr. Wiedemann was, and I quote, he's a bad dude for a white boy. He's the one that you've got to watch out for. <coughs> Fighting, Fighters of this quality, Mr. Mr. Wiedemann honed and sharpened his fighting skills and his techniques. John always believed that fighting was not a matter of endurance, but skill and conditioning. He wanted to be fresh and he wanted to be strong in his matches. He liked to fight the best guys first. He had a, what I call reverse psychology of fighting. He said he learned by losing. Those of us that have competed Whenever I would fight and I'd lose, I didn't feel like I learned anything. I felt really bad, but John felt it was an opportunity and he didn't win because he didn't do something right. Development of character, 
Mr. Wiedemann was very meticulous, and I found this to be very interesting, and it's true. He had a list of the top fighters on a piece of paper, and he put it in his wall. Every time he would face one of these opponents and he would beat them, he would cross their name off the list. And he continued to do that until eventually the list was completely uh, erased. In 1979, John mentioned to me that it was a very pivotal point in time in his career. It was his last time that he would fight. And he said it was a kind of a tragic event. Chang Wu Kwan is a very direct and a very aggressive style. And he said that our fighting skills could be compared to a bolt of lightning. And some things in the most refined state are not really meant to be controlled, but they have to be channeled. In this particular fight, Mr. Wiedemann was fighting his opponent and he realized that he was in a fight for real. He realized that the gentleman that was on the other side was trying to hurt him, not, not merely defeat him. Mr. Wiedemann unleashed his techniques that he had learned and ended up knocking out his opponent. But it also frightened him because he, remember, he realized how dangerous and how uh, volatile the techniques were. These are just a few uh, incidences that he mentioned. These are some of the things that John and I have shared over the years. And there are many other things that I could say about him. As a former athletic director and an athletic trainer, on the high school and college level, I can say that I've worked with many athletes in my day, and I can truly say that I've never seen anyone work as hard, be as dedicated, or systematically pursue a goal with the likes of Mr. Wiedemann. John has traveled the Orient, Korea, Thailand, in search of himself and to learn more in his travels. And one thing he told me out of all of his ventures was that, you know what, George? I searched all over, and the answer I was looking for was always here at home. It was with Master Chung, and it was with Chang Mukwan. Now, martial arts are more than fighting. Of the many encounters in life, some he would perhaps fail, but he would learn from them, and he would go on. He mentioned to me a statement that you heard earlier, to fall seven times, to rise eight times. Life starts from right now. John always knew that if he got knocked down, he was still up one more time that he was going to uh, persevere. These are just a few highlights that I would like to share with you this evening. In closing, I know John would like to thank his loving wife, Maggie, and his son, Ian, for their patience and for their support. As you other wives and significant others can attest, many times we were in the studio practicing, sometimes we're away, away from home more than you would like but we're honing our skills, we're trying to better ourselves. We want to protect our families, we want to protect our reputation and our image of Chang Laquan. Mr. Wiedemann's mom and dad could not be here this evening. Both of them are recovering from surgery and, and John told me his mom also had pneumonia, but they're with us here in spirit. And he would like to also acknowledge them and thank them for their support over the years. Mr. Wiedemann, without doubt, could not be where he is today without Master Chung and his support. And he also mentioned Jack McNally, Mr. McNally's dad who has allowed him and has kind of shown him the ropes and he's become just as he is in the martial arts a master, a master of business. This is my friend. This is the gentleman that I consider almost like a brother. And I say almost, I'm a lot older than John. I'm too young to be his dad too old to be his brother, but he's definitely my good and best friend. Thank you, sir.